more than his brothers, his older brothers. And, of course, they didn't like that, but, you know, things were going well for Joseph until his brother sold him as a slave. Somewhere on that journey to Egypt, Joseph had a, a choice to make. Does he give up in despair or not? He chose to follow God no matter where it led. And God honored that. God will always honor that type of um, commitment, that type of choice. You may not be the prime minister of Egypt, but God will always honor those choices. Then we can look at Ruth. Um, Ruth married these, uh, you know, a foreigner, and he passed away. So she's attached to the mother-in-law. And after the mother-in-law pretty much loses everything, she's going back to her country. And Ruth chose to go with her, come what may. She could have started over in Moab, but she chose to go with Naomi because there was something in Naomi that she wanted. When you read the book of Ruth, it seems like Naomi was a bitter old lady. <laughs> I mean, that does come across, but there must have been something in her that would inspire Ruth to follow no matter what. And that went well for her. Then there's Solomon. Solomon chose, of all the gifts that God was offering to him, he chose wisdom, which was an excellent choice. Um, it served him well. Then Solomon chose to find out about foolishness. I have no idea how bad his soul must have been tormented being wise enough to know that what I'm choosing is going to cause me pain and doing it anyway just to find out how bad it hurts I guess I don't know but you know it's it's one of those things he made a good choice then he chose to let things fall apart Then we have Esther. The, the king has just signed a law. He's, he's tricked into it, but he had signed a law that all the Jews were going to be um, put to death. Her being a Jew, you know, it was, um, how would you say, frightening. He didn't know she was a Jew, but yet, you know, this is coming up on a certain date, apparently. And she had to choose to go in before him and, and try and work this out. You know, I don't think she really knew what she was going to say until she got in there. And if he was in a bad mood, she dies. You know, that's it, just the way things worked. Um, I think it was inspiration that when she went in there and he held out his scepter to her and everything's okay, um, that instead of hitting him up right then and there, hey, this is happening, we got to fix this, that she invited him to a party you know, a little banquet at her apartment. And I think, I think that was the Holy Spirit speaking through her because I'm not sure I would have had that on the tip of my tongue going in there. But we know how that worked out. He was intrigued enough to go and the real culprit was there. And on the second party, um, then she had built up enough trust with him that she could lay out what's on her mind. And, well, let's say he took care of that. Um, 
I have a quote I'd like to read. The crisis that Esther faced demanded quick, earnest action, but both she and Mordecai realized that unless God should work mightily in their behalf, their own efforts would be unavailing. So Esther took time for communion with God, the source of her strength. If you'll recall, before she went in to see him, she had all the Jews in the land fast and pray in the land. I guess it was in the city, fast and pray for her safety. She didn't take this lightly. And it wasn't, yeah, I'll go in. She, she thought she couldn't die over this. And then another one I'd like to bring up is Mary Magdalene. Let's turn to Luke 10.42. Um, if you'll recall, this is where Martha's cooking and Mary's sitting at the feet of Jesus, chatting, listening, just fellowshipping with him while Martha's bustling about trying to get everything done. The joke in our family is that there's got to be some Martha's or nobody to eat. But... Um, what Jesus was trying to um, say here. Well, let's read it. But one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. Jesus wanted Martha to know that the important thing is not whether you fed the master, but that you communed with him. Um, we, we need to take care of this every day. And to be quite honest, it's a choice every day whether or not to do that. Um, you would think it would become a habit for us, but for some reason, that's one of the hardest habits to keep going, is that daily communion. Well, there's... Also, uh, the next section here is on the importance of choices. Choices are very important. And as it's my belief that God is pro-choice. Now, let me explain there. Um, God knows that without free choice, there cannot be love. God places the highest importance on our right for free choice. He, from the very beginning, he risked the happiness of the entire world over Adam and Eve being able to choose whether or not they loved him, whether or not they trusted him, whether or not they'd obey him. And it is one of the few things that God cannot take away from us. His character demands it. He can't go against his own character to take away our free choice. It has been said that our lives are a series of choices. Some are subtle, some not so much. Some of us, it's here, we have to decide. But if you think about it, your life is more than what you say. There's a lot of people that can say all the right things, but the choices they make in life lead you to think that there's another side to them. Another thing that has to do with the importance of choices is choices have consequences. Um, going back to 
what I said earlier about not blaming somebody else, it didn't get at him anywhere. I mean, he could blame all he wanted, but he had to suffer the consequences of his choice to eat the fruit, too. I'm not sure what would have happened if Eve had been the only one. I think God could have worked that out. But it, our choices are for real. So often, you know, it, it's not a video game where we can start over. Our choices are for real, and they do last. There's a there's a um, a saying in dirt biking: "Choose your rut carefully. You may be in it a while." Um, and it's real true. A lot of our choices, um, like my wife overheard a guy in the beauty salon the other day. He was in getting his hair cut. He's going to graduate in May. We didn't, she didn't catch what career he had chosen, but he found out he can't live on 30000 a year. Well, man, by the time I'm a senior in college, I think I could figure out whether or not I could live doing whatever the profession was. We need to choose carefully early on because you know, careers, spouses, um, whether or not you choose to be a happy person. These things stay with you for a long time. What are your biggest choices in life? Some of you, your choices are seemingly, the big ones, are still ahead of you, but maybe not. Maybe the choices you're making today will set you up for better choices later on or being able to have a choice. In conclusion, have God help you with the plan of your life. Since choices make up our life, filter each choice through the filter of how it fits the plan. Be mindful of principles. Don't let others choose for you. Make your own decisions. Persistence counts. Don't be wishy-washy. Know that others have made good choices before you. You can too. God values this process. You can't truly love him if you don't have the choice not to. Choose carefully. Heaven awaits you. And let's turn in our hymnals to number 590. <laughs> 590, if you would stand, please. Trust and obey.